welcome to my channel. Today I wanted to show you an adorable little scarecrow card I made. And it's a pull tab, so once you pull the tab, the little crow jumps out of the scarecrow. So I started here with some Distress Inks and Wilted Violet, Seedless Preserves, and Blueprint Sketch. And basically what I'm doing with these is just creating our hillsides. So I'm just coming in and darkening the layers a little bit because I know I'm going to spray them with water and paint splatter them. I want to make sure that I have a nice concentration of color. Now I'm going to come in with some seedless preserves and do the same thing. And I'm just making sure that I get a good blend here because when I cut them, I'm going to cut them on that seam so they have a nice transition and flow through them. Alright, now I'm happy with the panel, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my spray bottle and I'm going to spritz a little bit of water on there as well as just get ready to add some watercolor droplets and spray to the rest of the panel. So I'm just spritzing it with water here and you'll see me coming with a cloth. And this cloth is actually textured, which is kind of cool and gave some really neat unique markings to the panel, but if you do this you can certainly use a paper towel or something that's a little more smooth so you don't get the imprints. But now I'm just taking the watercolor and just making sure I have a nice spread of color on there. And now I'm just going to come in with a little bit more of the purple here and just get it nice and spread out. And now we can move on to the background panel, which is going to be entirely blue. And I wanted to create like a nighttime sky. So I went ahead and I took Blueprint Sketch and I just went all the way along my card base here and I wanted it to be pretty even coverage so that's what you see me doing here
Now I'm just going to take my spray bottle. And I left some big blotches on there. That was by mistake, but that's okay. It just gives it more texture. And then I'm going to take my watercolor again and do the same thing with the blue. I'm just going to give it a nice heavy coating of those speckles. And then I'm going to take my watercolor, beautiful stardust watercolors here, and I'm going to use the gold just to create some really nice shimmery stars. It's very pretty. Okay, and now my panels are ready for assembly, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the purple ones and I'm going to create some hillsides. And this is using the stitched simple wavy borders from Lawn Fawn. And I just created two of those, so see how I laid it on the seam there? That's why I wanted a nice blend there. So I put one on the bottom and then one on top. And now I'm just going to run this through my Gemini. And I took my ATG gun, I'm just going to run a little bit of tape on there. You'll see that several times throughout this video I kept <laughs> picking it up and putting it back down. That's because I didn't have my design in mind yet. So thankfully it's pretty forgiving on this watercolor paper. You can pull it up and if you need to change your mind or you need to add something else, thankfully they pull up really easily. So now I'm going to bring in some little characters I have from the Happy Harvest set. And I pre-colored these already. Um, I have a scarecrow, some sunflowers, and some scarecrows. And basically this is just going to set the scene. So I'm trying to figure out where I want things to go. And you'll see me change my mind several times. That's just how it works sometimes.
have a general idea of my placement here, but I knew I wanted the sunflowers to have some kind of stock to them. So I did pull up that first piece and now I'm just figuring out how to stamp everything and how to get everything lined up here. So I have some Memento black ink and I'm just going to stamp on top of that card front for the flower stems. And then I realized that I wanted the scarecrow to kind of sit in the ground a little bit more. So I grabbed the Sandy Beach Accents by Lawn Fawn. And I ran that through my Gemini just to give him something to sit in. And now I'm just going to add the sunflowers in a way that I like, just to kind of get a sense of the scene a little more. And as I was playing with this little crow on top of his head, I thought it would be so cute to make a little pull tab out of it and the crow could be peeking out behind the scarecrow and just playing in his hat. So that's what I did here. I changed my mind and I was like, nope, this is cute. So I'm just going to add a little bit of dimension to the scarecrow and then you'll see me bring the pull tab out on out from Let's Toast and I will <laughs> make that little guy jump up and down. So I'm just getting everything in place here and you'll see me grab some blue paper. I just wanted the background to be plain on that slider. So that's what I did here. I just grabbed a scrap and I'm going to tape that down as well as the support piece and the pull tab piece.
Now that I have the scarecrow in place, I'm just going to trace around it so that I can cut off the excess so you don't see the pull tab. And I apologize for being off camera here, all I'm doing is just cutting around my trace lines just to get it small enough so that the crow can fit. This was a happy mistake. Um, I didn't mean to glue the crow on before I put the pull tab in. <laughs> so later you'll see me kind of just jiggle it in that little nook there. Thankfully he's small enough so he fits and he was just easy to stick it in there. But when you do this, <laughs> theoretically, you're supposed to put the pull tab in first and then glue whatever you want to slide on top. So it's okay, no big deal. We'll fix it a little later. So here I am just wiggling in the crow a little bit to try and get him to slide and then I'm going to glue down the support part as well as cut the excess off. And isn't that just so fun how he jumps on the hat? I love it so much. It's so cute. And now I'm just going to put some dimension on these little sunflowers. I decided to add foam tape to the smallest ones and then leave the larger ones flat. And now I'm just going to add the pull tab piece. So I added the bit of sky that cut out when I originally cut out the tab. And then now I'm going to add the little pull tab on top so that I have a little bit of that sky peeking out from the arrow.
And now my panel is complete, so I'm just going to glue it on the background of my card, and then I'm going to add a sentiment as well. I was trying to decide between if I wanted a black background or the white, but I thought the white looked a little cleaner and a little brighter, so I went with that. So I chose the sentiment, you're amazing, which I think is so funny. <laughs> uh, it's the little things in life. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat emboss it on some black cardstock with some white embossing powder. And I'm just taking my powder tool, which prevents the extra powder from getting anywhere but where you want it. And then I'm just going to stamp it with my Lawn Fawn embossing ink and then run it through my embossing powder. And now I'm just going to add my sentiment strip to the front of the card, and we are almost done. And here's the completed card with that little crow that just jumps up and down for joy. And then I finally wanted to finish with just some cute little sunflowers on the inside in black and white. So I'm just taking these two sunflowers in my Memento Black ink and just stamping these on the corner just to give the card a little bit of interest when you open it. So that is the finished card. Thank you so much for watching. You can find me on Instagram at Music one Have a great day!